Hey everyone, thanks for joining me here today on Teslanomics Live. I have a lot of fun stuff to talk about and way too many questions to cover. In fact, this was the first time I wasn't able to be able to answer all the questions. I had to filter some of them, um, but there were a lot of repeats and all that too. So uh, thank you for sending those in in advance. Um, I will be taking a live Q&A at the end of this session, so please hold your questions until then as I won't be able to scroll back and see everything before then. Um, so first and foremost, um, there are some really fun big things to talk about, but I got to cover some of the news events. And the first one I want to talk about is this report from Bloomberg that renewable energy is not a threat to the grid in the U.S. So this was a draft of a study that was done by the Department of Energy, uh, which is now head, uh, led by Rick Perry, uh, who is very skeptical and um, being from Texas and all this, wants to see more coal and these kind of things um, in our grid because they, I don't know, uh, want, you know, that's their base that, that votes for them. So they're trying to play favorites a bit. And he ordered a study of it to be done. And um, the findings, which are still under review by the department's leadership, um, go against Perry's arguments that the base load sources, such as coal and nuclear power that provide constant power, are jeopardized by Obama-era incentives for renewable energy, making the grid unreliable. So this draft of the report that was leaked basically said the opposite of that. Um, and so, you know, just some quotes from it here from Perry he said, I've asked the staff of the Department of Energy to undertake a critical review of regulatory burdens placed by the previous administration on base load generators. So basically saying um, the stuff Obama did to try to make us have a cleaner, you know, less CO2 emitting uh, source of energy is creating a burden on the folks that generate a lot of the CO2 emissions and, you know, uh, cause climate change and those kind of things. So let's, 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 let's try to understand that burden. Um, so it doesn't, doesn't harm you anymore. Uh, so over the last several years, uh, the grid experts have expressed concern about the erosion of critical baseload resources. So, um, he ordered this thinking that he would get what he wants and noting this is still a draft. So there may be, uh, some new stuff coming out. If you're watching this in the future, you know, this, this may be a bit different. But uh, this was exciting news for us that believe that uh, sustainable forms of energy are the ones that we ought to pursue instead of the, the, the other forms of, of energy which, uh, you know, harm the environment and regardless of that are just not sustainable anyways. So um, I, I was, I, I'm excited about this uh, because it, it just further um, further supports the evidence that renewable sources of energy are the way that uh, we're going to go in the U.S. here. And, and that is kind of without, you know, even people like, like this in positions of power like this trying to stop us. So uh, I'm excited about this. And, and, and uh, I, I hope you'll check it out. After this video is done, uh, it'll, all the links to these things will be in the description down below. Um, and you can get them um, on the email list at teslanomics.co as well. So the next thing I want to talk about is Tesla is going all vegan. Um, and this is kind of an interesting thing where uh, they will no longer have leather seats as an option, um, but th the car won't be totally vegan. I'll explain that in a second here. Um, so Business Insider, and the reason I'm, I'm calling them out on this or showing this is because they had a pretty cool thing that um, you they actually surveyed folks here about what other manufacturers are doing uh, and, you know, you can see him here. Lexus does not currently have a vegan car interior. Audi, yeah, you know, yes, no, no. Basically, nobody's really doing it. Acura, though, had an interesting statement where they said, we do offer a leatherette on our base ILX. However, even if a dealer installed the animal-free seating services, the steering wheel is leather, which is true of Tesla as well. Now, Tesla did say, mm -hmm. though, that they, uh, if the customer requests, could replace that with a non-leather option. So, uh, they're going vegan. Um, I don't know if this is a good thing or not. I I'm not too uh, off put by having leather in the car. Uh, maybe some people this will actually be uh, be more damaging because they want those those higher end um, uh, d types of uh, finishes in their car, and they already give Tesla a hard time about that. So we'll see how that goes. So that was number two. Now uh, another one that's kind of fun is Elon recently uh, made some tweets about being able to go from New York to DC, that's New York City to Washington DC, in 20 mon 29 minutes in a Hyperloop. Now, there's a couple things here that, that are kind of weird, and I'm gonna do a video on this uh, in a couple weeks, 
or it'll be coming out in a couple weeks. So here's the tweet from Elon, and I'll try to ma maximize this a little bit so you can read it. He said, just received verbal government approval from the Boring Company to build an underground uh, New York, Philly, Baltimore, D.C. Hyperloop. New York to D.C. in 29 minutes. So this is confusing to me because I thought the Boring Company was making these um, underground tunnels in which you would drive onto them. It would lower you down and then take you at about 130 miles an hour to your destination. You'd pop back up and then drive away. And this seems to be something different or it is there's some some other details there so this is the confusion and and he didn't really clarify um he did have another statement here where he said um city center to city center in each case with up to a dozen or more entry exit elevators in each city so see again um if you wanted to go from new york to dc um i, I did a little bit of research here that's 226 miles between the cities uh, via the roadway so granted you won't have to drive the exact roadway but uh, close to you know 226 miles. Currently, it takes over four hours. And uh, if you wanted to be on a skate, that skate would need to go near 500 miles per hour in order to get there in 29 minutes. So that seems unlikely based on what they've already shared about those skates, which means it will be a hyperloop instead, the actual floating uh, levitation kind of um, vacuum tube thing that he came out with a while ago. But then his statement here about city to city uh, with a dozen or more entry exit elevators, that makes me think it is the boring company skates. So if you have information on this, I'd love to hear your thoughts in a comment down below um, after the video posts because I'm a little bit confused by this. I'm excited about it because that's awesome. Although I don't live on the East Coast, I think this would be just great for transportation out there and help you know this, this uh, new concept he's pushing grow and, and become even more prevalent. Uh, but I'm a little bit confused. So I'm looking for details on this. If you have them, uh, please let me know. Um, and, and I'll keep, keep an eye on this story because I think it's going to be a very interesting one um, in the future here soon. Okay, so uh, if you're new to the show here, what I have is a few different segments. And this one I have, uh, I'm just calling this is cool. Um, I, I don't know what else to say, but I saw this photo recently, and this was from um, something floating around on, I think, Instagram, where it had a, a photo of an, of an electric vehicle from 1905, it said. Um, and it's real. <laughs> so this is Snopes. If you're unfamiliar with this, this is a website that uh, does research into things to figure out if they're true or false. And so a lot of times when you see these things on the internet, uh, they're just lies, right? They're just fake um, or doctored or whatever. And so uh, it turns out that this, uh, and you can see this was the uh, the Twitter account here, History Lovers Club, Charging Electric Car 1905. Well, um, it, it turns out that that's not actually the, the case. Um, it's not 1905, but it is an electric car charging. So if I go down, you can see that um, the plugged-in car featured in the photo, which initially caught my eyes, was a Detroit Electric, a vehicle produced by Anderson Electric Company from 1907 to 1939. So couldn't have been 1905, unless this is like basically the Model 3 sneak peeks we've been seeing way back when. Um, the photo is part of a group of promotional images showing the auto on a trip from Seattle to Mount Rainier. Um, other photographs from the group show the car uh, wending its way through the mountains of Washington. So you can see uh, those photos here. So this is pretty awesome. Um, I think this is this is really cool. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure what to make of it, but uh, yeah, I mean uh, it's exciting to see that that you know electric cars were around back then. So yeah, again, this is just my you know today in what's cool. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is my short. And so for the short, this is the thing I don't like or the thing I'm betting against, uh, a term that people often use to describe um, an act that they're doing um, in the stock market. So when we're talking about the economy, a lot of times we'll say I'm short on that, meaning I'm against it or I don't like it. And for, the, for my short this week, it is the key card rumor 
um, about how to enter and exit the Model 3. So uh, here's a shot, and this is from Teslarati, where um, Senior Vice President of Engineering Doug Field was spotted at the Fremont factory driving off um, in his Model 3, serial number 003. Uh, congrats, Doug, on, on, on having such an awesome car. By the way, I hope to see you this Friday. I'd love to chat. Um, and so one of the things here is that there's a key card. Now, people were assuming or saying that he was entering and exiting the vehicle with a key card. So the way these work in today's world is that you have to go up to something and tap it, um, and there's an RFID chip. Now, an RFID chip is a radio frequency ID tag, and there's active and passive. So the active one requires electricity, and it's basically uh, uh, looking for that matching radio frequency that it's been programmed to accept, and then it will perform some action, typically unlocking a door. Um, and you can see the, the the shots of him here with that stuff. Now, um, if, you, if you go look, there are some issues with this. So uh, first off, um, these can be hacked really easily. You can, you can uh, clone them from far away. In fact, um, this researcher here uh, had, had a quote about it, um, and it, it, they said that using Brown's device, all a criminal has to do is walk past you on the street in order to clone your RFID-equipped cards, even if they're buried purse or pocket, and thereby gain access to your office. So here what they're talking about are... Um, are, are the typical ones that you use on doors. Now, there are some other technologies that I think are more interesting that would be even better. If, if Tesla's gonna go this route, um, like for example, I know you can unlock your car currently with your phone by going to the app and clicking a button, but uh, there are also other locks that are Bluetooth connected to where you walk up to uh, your, your door, let's say, and it automatically recognizes your device and unlocks before you even get to the handle. I would like to see that. So that way I don't have to carry a card um, in addition to all my other stuff. And also I don't have to then actually take the card out and tap it to the door as you see in this photo here. Because to me, that is worse than what I currently do is just walk up to my car and it, it the door handle pops out. Even my wife's Acura RDX, I walk up to it, I stick my hand down underneath the door handle and it, and it recognizes the key fob is nearby and automatically unlocks. So I never have to take the key or anything out of my pocket, click a button or do anything like that. This seems like more work to me. Now, I do agree that, and I don't know if I have my keys around here, but um, having a bunch of crap on your keys sucks. So I like that it's slimmer, but I don't like that it would be essentially more work. Now, if they've figured out some way to uh, to make that better and, and to automatically just work as you, as you go up to the car, then fantastic. Um, but I think this is pretty speculative here. Um, now, if there's if there's more evidence of this, I would you know love to see it. And this Friday, of course, we'll we'll find out. Um, but yeah, this is my short for the week. I don't like this idea, um, and I hope hope it doesn't come to reality. But it's not like a game changer. It's not really like a something that a showstopper for me. Well, next I want to talk about um, having some fun, and this is my son's new Tesla. Uh, he's only two. He already owns a Tesla. This is a Model S, a P90D. Uh, they had to make some modifications to it, um, namely make it smaller, cut off the top so he could sit in it. Um, and he's actually a little bit too small. He can't quite reach the pedals. Uh, but I just want to say thank you to everybody that helped me, um, you know, earn the referral rewards for this, as well as the Model 3 event that's coming soon. So this is him. He was fascinated with the rims. He couldn't. He wouldn't let go of the rims. He just kept trying to, trying to pull them off and spin them around and stuff. Um, but yeah, thank you to everyone. Here's it charging. Um, and, and, you know, I don't know, I'll have more videos uh, about this coming out soon. Uh, but right now, you know, I just wanted to share this with you. It's kind of fun. Okay, let's see. And the big news that I wanted to share today, um, that I'm going to go just back to this one just to, to, cause I don't actually have, um, any, any detail, any websites or anything to show you. Well, maybe I do. I lied. So somebody reached out to me very recently and they gave me some info about the Tesla Model 3. And that info, hold on, let me take a drink. That info is that as uh, my hunch uh, I had earlier, uh, turns out to be uh, pretty accurate in that the Tesla Model 3 will have 
new larger battery cells um, than the previous models. So let's break this down for a second here. Um, and I'll go back to, uh, to, to the browser. So the way lithium ion batteries work is uh, you, you, know, you have you know, the, the lithium in there um, and all the other uh, metals that, 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 that store the energy and, and you know, they discharge pretty similar to how any other battery works, but they come in these different sizes. And if I look, you can see I'm looking at um, this link here, which has a lot of details about how these cars are, or, sorry, how these batteries are made. And there are these different cell sizes. And then there's the typical capacity. These are in milliamp hours. So, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that's correct. So uh, if you look, the 18650, these are the ones that um, are currently being used in Teslas. And uh, not too long ago, Tesla announced the 2170 cells uh, were new and were going to be used in, in some of the other ones, but that they were not going to be used in the Model S or X. So they have these different cells, and these cells come together in modules, and these modules come together in, in the kind of big giant pack, the skateboard that you're used to seeing, and those are all wired up and connect into the uh, electric motor, the, the drivetrain, and then that's how the car goes, essentially. Those are the, the, the high-level components. So um, the information I have uh, from somebody close to Tesla uh, just received, basically, you know, I, I willed this into existence, uh, to to uh, to use a phrase from from Ryan, is is that they will have uh, new cells uh, that are a 4416 um, cell, not the 2170s, not the 18 uh, six six fifties, but a 4416 cell, and that would mean that the cell is bigger and more energy dense, which means you can have less of them to achieve the same energy output. Now, I had this hunch a while ago because what I kept seeing were things that appeared not to be possible. How could you, how could you achieve over 300 miles on, on this car with 75 kilowatt hours? Uh, it's not that much smaller and more aerodynamic than the, S or, or, uh, than the S is, but it gets a ton more mileage. How is that possible? Mm -hmm. um, well, if you have a more energy dense battery, then you, you uh, will lighten the load by, I don't know, depending on, on how, uh, what kind of level of efficiency they achieved, um, you'll be able to lighten the load uh, you know, 40 plus percentage. Now, this also uh, it was supported by the fact that Tesla is discontinuing the cheapest version of the Model S, the 75 kilowatt hour rear wheel drive ahead of the Model 3 launch. A lot of people are speculating that this is because um, it, they, they want to separate these two vehicles so that, you know, you're not looking and going, well, I'd rather get a souped up model three than a base model S, which a lot of people are probably on that fence. You know, and a lot of you guys have emailed me, um, asking about that same question. So here though, what I think the reason for this is that the new base is going to be a hundred with these new cells. And we're going to see upwards of a 200 kilowatt hour pack uh, for the larger, larger models. Now, of course, that means that they'll get a, a much larger range. I haven't done the math on, on, on exactly what that would mean, but you know, bit just back of the napkin type stuff, we're looking at 450, maybe close to 500 miles on a single charge. So that's my speculation, right? The information I received was that they will have new cells. The cells are 4416s, and that is, you know, going to lead to or th that is how they're achieving a lighter load on the Model 3, which gives them the range. And then so it makes sense that it stands to reason, um, as my father-in-law would say, that they would use those cells on the S and the X to give them even extended range over what they currently have, also making it a higher premium and really just, just kind of catapulting this stuff um, into the next level to where uh, the electric vehicles are no longer limited by range. In fact, you're, you might even be longer than a lot of other cars in the similar, um, similar category. So that's huge. And uh, I've only have one, you know, one source uh, right now. So I haven't corroborated this with others. So it could be, you know, uh, bad information or, or uh, not 100% right. But we'll find out this Friday um, when I and many others, uh, you know, descend on San Francisco to see the final production models and, and what's going on with them there. But uh, I'm excited about this. If this turns out to be true, then that is a major, major win 
um, for Tesla and as well as um, the, the EV market itself. Um, I assume they'd be selling these new cells to other manufacturers um, after they probably um, you know <laughs> make all of their cars, which they have a huge backlog up. So I'm really curious uh, about that. Like I said, I haven't corroborated this with, with others, but a source close to Tesla shared this with me just recently, and I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, it's not fact. I don't have details. Uh, so chalk it up as a rumor if you like. Uh, but in any, in any event, it's exciting. And that was my big news that I was really dying to share with you guys today. So uh, next, I would like to move on to the Q&A section. And thank you to everyone that submitted your questions in advance. Um, and I will switch over to those now. So first and foremost, uh, Jeff Price asks, will this be the last round of free referral supercharging? Got my assigned VIN yesterday. Congrats, Jeff, and, and some friends want to buy, but my referral code will likely expire by then. By the way, thanks again for the referral. We'll be driving around 200 to 30, 20 to 30,000 miles this year alone for work and supercharging will be perfect. Well, you're welcome, Jeff. Um, and if you or anyone else, you know, does want to, um, uh, does, is looking to buy and, you know, wants to, to use my referral code, you're absolutely welcome to do that. Uh, you have to be my friend first and foremost so to become my friend go to teslanomics.co slash td and th there's a form there you fill out um the official friendship uh form approved by tesla and and then and then we'll be friends and then i can send you my code so anyways go check that out teslanomics.co slash td uh so to answer your question though jeff will this be the last round of free supercharging who the hell knows they change this thing every other week i wouldn't be surprised if we have another change before the end of the year if not multiple um so yeah, I mean, encourage your friends to buy sooner rather than later. I, I don't know what else to say. Um, but th thanks for the question. John G asks, I've been waiting on my Model S pre-owned for a few weeks now. I need to cancel due to family responsibilities. That's a bummer. Do you or anyone you might know have experience canceling and getting the $1,000 deposit back? Uh, John, I, I, I don't. Um, uh, it sucks that you have to go through this or you know that, that you're not going to be able to join the Tesla family. Uh, but uh, hopefully they, they, they take care of you and uh, and, and serve you well. I, mean, I would contact your sales rep. Um, that's when I was buying a car. That's who I worked with, um, and they were always really good to me. So, Lester from British Columbia uh, asks. Um, it was previously stated that day one reservation holders will receive some type of bonus for their early reservation. I've heard people thinking it might be a special color uh, or badging. Others have thought as much as free supercharging or free glass roof. What do you think it will be? I think it'll be free supercharging. Um, I've never actually said that before, but just after actually looking at your question and thinking about it more, um, you know, people use supercharging less than 10% of the time. Uh, some people don't ever use it. Um, so it's really not a huge cost to Tesla to, to offer it. Um, you know, of course they're adding and they're, and they're continuing to grow that network. I think we have a lot of unfounded fear that, you know, they'll, you won't be able to use superchargers. They'll all be booked. Remember a lot of these are out in the middle of nowhere where very few people are, are, are there, you know, to charge. Um, it's only really the, the ones that are located within cities. So th those are kind of the things, um, to think about. So I'm guessing it's free supercharging, uh, maybe a special color, uh, but yeah, who knows? Um, I, I would hope it would be free supercharging because that would be something everybody could take advantage of. The special color, you know, like for example, for myself, I, I probably, if it's the signature red, I particularly don't like that color, so I wouldn't go for it. Thanks for the question. Dave in Chicago. Hey, Dave, haven't been to Chicago yet, but I do have some family there, so I need to come visit. Um, any news about the cost to upgrade the battery? Uh, I love your posts because they're extremely up to date. Well, thank you uh, for that, and thanks for the question. Um, I don't have any specific news. I assume this Friday we'll hear a lot more details on it, so stay tuned. Also, I'm going to be doing a vlog for the whole event on Friday. Um, I, I won't be you know, doing live streaming and that kind of thing. There will be literally dozens and dozens of major media outlets there. Follow them. They'll give you all the details. Come back on the next day, and, and, and you'll see my experience about it. I'm going to be overnight editing and publishing that, that, that video. So I'll be up 24 hours right there. Thanks for the question. Jonathan in Austin asks, um, first, let me take a drink. On a previous video, you showed the electrical route from your breaker box to where the Model S is parked. Are you going to install a second connection for the Model 3? Or are you going to share with the Model S? If you're going to install a new connection, will you use the Tesla wall charger or the NEMA 1450 outlet with the mobile charger? Uh, so I am going to share with the Model S. Uh, I'm not going to install another one. 
Uh, me nor my wife drive uh, a ton for work. Uh, I, you know, I'm in my studio here at my house. Uh, my wife's uh, only about three or four miles away um, where she works. And so we won't really need one. So I'm not going to install one because it is a, a good expense. And uh, if, but if I were, I would probably just install the NEMA 1450. I like the idea of the Tesla wall charger, but uh, the cost of it doesn't seem like it's worth it to me. Um, I, I, I may replace my current one with a wall charger one day, um, but you know, we got to redo the garage. That's just a, a lot of work. So thanks for the question. Uh, Aitor Alonso from Bilbao, Spain asks, Hey Ben, I recently saw the statements about the Tesla master plan. Creating a pickup and a bus appear to be Elon's next long-term goals. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, bus, I don't think so. Uh, semi. Um, and do you think the Tesla should take on those challenges or should they be focused on building a strong brand? Um, and uh, you did have a lot more on your, on your question there. Sorry, I had to cut it off to fit on the screen here. But I, I get the sentiment. Um, so uh, I think their plan makes sense. I think they've actually, one of Tesla's strength has, has been their strategy from the get-go of making... Uh, you know, uh, a very expensive yet sexy uh, roadster, which very few people, but a lot of celebrities and other other folks endorsed, which really uh, sparked the interest in them. Then they made this awesome sedan, which really just dominates the market now in the luxury sedan world. Uh, and then, and then you know, th their rollout strategy here, I think, is great. Um, I, I think they're doing it right. The one thing I'm really confused by is the semi. Now, I understand that these are big ticket items, but I don't know where they're going to build them. And I don't know if they even have the capacity. And uh, really, the economics of that just have to work. You know, that industry... The way it works is you have to, the economics are the thing. You know, unlike the consumer market where um, the, the flashiness or the aesthetics can draw people in, in the trucking space, I you know, companies are going to care less about how the damn thing looks. It's just going to be, is it economically viable? And if so, th th that'll be the winner. Um, which actually plays to the idea of, uh, of them installing these um, uh, supercharger 3.0s that will have a 300-something kilowatts uh, you know, speed of energy of, uh, transfer so they can charge even faster. That would make sense if you had semis and you put these out on, on trucking routes. So, um, yeah, I, I think they, I think they know what they're doing. Um, but thanks for the question. And, uh, yeah, uh, I, I love hearing from people from Spain because I'm such a fan. Um, estoy aprendiendo también. Entonces, uh, uh quieres hablar en español? Uh, dime. Vale. Okay, Dave uh, Glatfelty, uh, any idea we'll see a major car magazine right up after the delivery event? Absolutely. But, you know, instead of those major car magazines, just come watch my vlog. And now I know I haven't done a vlog before, and it's going to be the first go and not as good as it could be. But, hey, just come watch my vlog. Forget the major car magazines. Anyways, thanks for the question. Uh, Joe asks, uh, my future Model 3 will be parked in my garage for at least 15 hours per day. Uh, will a standard 120 volt outlet be all I ever need? Uh, would installing a 240 outlet in my garage be a waste of money in the case? I think what you're, uh, I don't think 240 is the right number, but yeah, I get your, get your point. So, um, the thing that I would say is yes, you should install that, uh, the, 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 the NEMA 1450 outlet, which isn't a 240, um, or maybe it is, I forget. Uh, but yeah, whatever I, I would install that or the, or the Tesla wall charger, um, uh, because, the 120 volt, I believe, only pulls something like three to five miles uh, per hour. So 15 hours, you're still only getting, you know, maybe 50 something miles uh, of charge on 15 hours. So yeah, I would I would go with the big one. You know, it still will take, you know, depending on the range and all that, you know, six to six to seven hours to charge fully if you were down to zero. So I would I would do it for sure. Cameron from San Clemente, hey, another SoCal. Uh, native, uh, do we know when Tesla will be announcing features and pricing for the Model 3? This Friday. Stay tuned. Uh, Mr. Handball asks, any chance those expected to receive their Model 3s this November will at least have a chance to sit in one before making full commitment to purchase? Us tall guys, six foot three, that's not me included, uh, have some concern as currently Tesla is happy to have you test drive the Model S, which is comfortable to fit, but 12 inches longer than the Model 3. So a uh, couple comments on this. One, um, the way I understand it, because uh, uh, the way EVs work and basically the whole car the, the, is underneath, um, they, they, their ratio of the outer footprint, the, you know, the, 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 the length and the height of the car, but essentially the shell of it on the outside, compared to how much interior space they have, is really second to none. 
Um, and I know, I know I think Lucid is actually coming out with something that's a bit better, maybe in 10 years, who knows if and when that thing happens. But anyways, um, so it, I'm hoping that we'll all be a bit surprised about how roomy and nice it is on the inside. Um, but uh, chances that you'll actually be able to sit in one uh, are actually pretty good. I've heard a lot of rumors about this where they're going to be shipping out Q3 of this year to the stores so you can actually test drive one and sit in one and all that. So uh, I'm not sure exactly how the, the process is going to go, but I will say there is a chance um, if those rumors uh, are, are, are to be true. And of course, as soon as I get my Model 3, I will be um, you know, doing all kinds of videos, including having uh, some of my taller friends sit in it and tell me, you know, I share that experience. So thank you all for those questions that you submitted in advance. Uh, I am going to now take some questions here um, from the live chat. So if you have any, uh, please go ahead and ask them now. I'm going to go back just to the webcam shot, and I will be um, awaiting your, your inquiries. So let's take a look. Oh man, there's too many. How would you have a self-driving motorcycle though? That's a great question, um, with the gyroscope. <laughs> oh man, it looks like you guys are having a fun discussion here. Let me see. Uh, Corny Gamer, hey, welcome back. Uh, I'm gonna pick up my Tesla Model 3 from Fremont and bring it to Chicago, already got authorization. Good for you, congrats. They said for all wheel drive, I would get the car mid summer 2018. Does that sound right? Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, that's awesome that they told you that. Uh, that's the first I've heard of them giving this this info out. If you find more, uh, I'd love to see it. Uh, it depends a lot. Like, so for example, uh, when you place your order is very important. That's probably the most important factor. Whether or not you're a Tesla owner, also, um, and then where you live. So. Uh, you know, I'm surprised that they've given out any details about that, um, and, and expect that we'll hear more, I, I guess, uh, coming soon. Um, I misunderstood the Fremont factory. They have a lot of opportunity spaces. They said they can at least double their amount of assembly lines in the dark places of the factory. Okay, cool. When I was there, it didn't look like that. Um, it looked like they were pretty much maxed out. Um, did you hear about the syndicate charger for the big five from Germany? Your thoughts on that? Um, I've not, I've not heard, heard about that. Um, I do know that, uh, a lot of the big companies are trying to turn, trying to keep up with uh, Tesla and try to um, you know make electric vehicles and all that. So, but that's about all I've got. <clears throat> and Eli asked any news about Elon Musk's Neuralink? Um, I haven't heard anything new. Um, I'm excited about it. In fact, uh, a friend of mine who I did an interview with, uh, Joe Scott, he has a channel called Answers with Joe, um, is uh, is pretty good and he goes into that quite quite deeply. So I would go check out uh, his channel if you want some more info on Neuralink. Hey Ben, do you think the Tesla sharing network is likely to follow after the Model 3 launch, allowing users to rent their cars by the hour? Yes, uh, but I think follow after the Model 3 event as in like years. I don't think it'll happen anytime soon. Um, what do you think about Faraday Future? Uh, I like competition in the market. I hope they make it. I know that they're, I think, bankrupt right now, um, or they're out of business completely. I hope not. Uh, yeah, it, it, it sounds like Faraday and, and Lucid are having troubles, and I could be misinformed on that, um, but I, I hope they make it. I hope they figure it out. Um, ben, what do you need to charge a Tesla in your house? So, uh, there, you know, you can actually plug into a standard wall outlet, and as I mentioned, it'll take forever, uh, but you need to install um, a NEMA 1450 outlet. Um, or a Tesla wall charger. And you can go, if you just uh, Google for that um, Tesla charging, um, there, there's a whole page there dedicated to what you need. Now, different countries have different setups. And so, yeah, I would you know check those out um, depending on where you live. Um, so there's that. Um, let me see, any chance to some truly advanced voice assistance in the Model 3? Jarvis? Yes, I would love that. I, I do think that the uh, Model 3 or the Tesla current... Um, voice commands are lacking, uh, but I understand why. They need to make APIs to go into uh, some of the more hardware aspects of the car. So yeah, so there's that. Um, what do you think about the shorter back seats in the Model 3? So yeah, I saw that photo too. It didn't look too bad to me. Um, who knows uh, what, what it'll be like once um, once you, know, you actually sit in it, but um, yeah, I, I think it'll be tight. 
just like a smaller car would be. Even in the Model S, I think it's kind of tight. So yeah, I mean, it's not going to be good, but uh, hey, it works. And you know, I don't typically have that many people in the back seat. So, uh, do you think we will hear more about the Supercharger V3 at the Model 3 uh, event this Friday? I doubt it. I, I don't think so. Um, I, I I don't think we're gonna we're gonna hear about that. How about battery swapping for the Tesla semi truck? That's cool. Special stations along popular trucking routes might make this viable. Yeah, I agree. I think that'd be cool. Um, do you know about any plans for India? Uh, last I heard, they were in talks um, and that the India government was uh, uh, saying some stuff about them um, being able to not have to, the, to meet some manufacturing requirement that they thought they had. So anyways. Uh, hey, do you have any idea when we'll get information about payment options for the Model 3? Well, I imagine this Friday we'll hear a lot about the Model 3, and that could be part of it. Um, if not, as soon as people start getting um, the actual configuration invitations out, then it'll be, uh, th then it'll happen. So, um, is California still charging tax if you pick up in another state? Yes. Uh, would like to pick up in factory. Uh, the factory is in California, so I'm not sure if I understand your question. But yeah, um, if you so I think what you're talking about, if you go to Arizona and buy a car and then come back to California and then register it, if you do that within two years, you have to pay sales tax on the on the entire vehicle in California as well because they don't want you avoiding paying taxes on cars. Um, so there you go. Um, let's see what else. What other questions do we have here? Uh, what is your take on the 18 inch or wheels versus the 19 inch? I like the 19 inch. Um, I think, you know, they look nicer, but, um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, I, I think that, uh, uh, the bigger wheels uh, have smaller tires, which, uh, wear out faster. If I understand correctly, everyone's been telling me this after I had to replace all my tires on my Tesla just recently. Um, so yeah, there you go. Do you think their their M, uh, the model three owners will have the key card or the key fob? Yeah, I, I addressed that earlier. Uh, I hope it's not the key card. I don't like the key card, um, but you know it, it may be. Uh, I don't know it's a rumor out there. It seems odd to me, um, but anyways, uh, do you think the browser in the Model Three will be faster than the current in the Model S? You know, I don't think it's the browser that's slow. I think it's the internet connection. Uh, hopefully, the browser is more more compliant, um, and you can do cooler things. Like right now, the reason Spotify doesn't work on the browser is because the browser doesn't have a connection to the uh, speakers in the car. So you can't play things, play audio through the browser. So I hope that the browser just has those things, you know, it's more, more updated. Um, anyways, um, there you go. Um, can you post the link to the live event on your site? Uh, I will be, uh, as I go there, I will be posting it. Um, yeah, but, but, uh, not sure what you mean uh, outside of that. Uh, will you use a self-driving feature as soon as it rolls out? Man, I don't know. Um, I think, I think it's one of those things that, uh, I've, I've been telling a lot of people about this. Um, the first time you get in a car with autopilot, you will, uh, it, it's scary. Uh, but then after maybe 10 times you're, you're okay with it. And maybe after a hundred times it, it feels normal. And after a thousand times, it's just second nature. So I think the self-driving is going to be the same way. I think the very first time you let your car go somewhere, you're going to be in a parking lot asking it to go park or something. You're going to be very, very, you know, nervous and cautious with it. Um, and then after you do that a dozen times, it'll feel more normal. And then eventually, you know, my, my big dream with that is that I can go to a restaurant and get out of the car and hit a button and have it go park. I don't need it necessarily to drive me there and back. Um, that's fine, like uh, cool. But, you know, until that's really, really good, I, I don't think it'll be, be, be that awesome. Um, but parking is a pain in the ass, especially here in, in Southern California. So um, there, there you go. Um, model three in Europe by 2020. Absolutely. I think the model three will be there in maybe late 2018, early 2019. Uh, wouldn't it be cool if you could choose to pick up your reservation at the Fremont factory? Yeah, that would be cool. I wonder if you can do that. Um, could it be optional to use the key card or a key fob? Yeah, I don't know. Um, maybe uh, I think that'd be weird if they, if they did both, um, cause it'd be extra, extra work and all that. So Oh man, what's my thoughts on the aero wheels? They're hideous. They are so hideous. The aero wheels on the S are even worse. They tried to put one on my car the other day and and uh, and it didn't work. Anyways, um, yeah. So there you go. <laughs> uh, Connecticut changes rules and 3K is only for purchases from authorized dealers. Okay. Uh, for electric all-wheel drive, do you need to replace all the tires at the same time, like gas all-wheel drive? 
I don't know. I, I would, yeah, I would assume so. Um, on mine, it's only rear-wheel drive, and I, I replaced all of them just because they were all dead anyways. But, um, yeah. Any chance that Tesla could have an app store eventually? Yes, 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 yes. I love this idea, and I absolutely think they need to do it. Um, of course, that makes it more risky because potentially somebody could do something that would uh, interfere with the car's ability to drive or take over the car and all that, but that's already uh, already in existence. So, um, Ben, could car companies make an agreement with Tesla to use superchargers? I, I assume, uh, sure, from a business standpoint, but then they would have to have a way to actually use them, and that would mean their cars would have to be compatible. I, I don't see it happening. Uh, but yeah, I mean, sure, from a business standpoint, why not? Um, yes, I'll, uh, uh, Jason Perez, well, Ben, will you be meeting up with other YouTubers? Yes, I will be, and yes, we'll be doing videos. So we have now, I guess this is our second time meeting up. The first time was at the Tesla VIP factory tour. This one is called uh, Tesla Con 1.5. Uh, we're calling it because it's only been a few months um, since the last meetup. In fact, only like, geez, like like two or something. Um, but yeah, we're, we're gonna be having a dinner and, and, and chatting and, and doing all kinds of fun stuff like that. I'm gonna try to get a lot of interviews with folks. I want, if I can, just to get uh, shots with all the 30 people that are gonna be getting their cars. Um, as well as I know some other big YouTubers like MKBHD are going to be there um, and, and, and some other folks. So I'd love to, uh, I'll, I'll try to do a lot um, with a lot of folks as I go. In fact, I've got a whole vlogging rig set up that, that, that I've got. I mean, I've been ordering all kinds of parts. I've got extra batteries galore, all kinds of crap um, for this event. So uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'm planning on doing uh, quite a bit. So stay tuned for that. Uh, let's see. Why does the media always talk about when Tesla crashes? Well, uh, you know, it, it, it's like anything. Um, uh, people love to see things fail, and, and there's a lot of skeptics in the U.S. Um, you know, it, it's funny because a lot of the skeptics, uh, typically a lot of the skeptics that you find with something like Tesla, real brand new technology is disrupting a, a, you know American institution, is usually they play the foreign card. And they say, oh, you know, this, uh, you, you don't, you know, this Japanese, whatever, you know, cars are going to ruin our economy, this and that. And then the free market, if you really believe in the free market, you say, well, look, make a better damn car and then people will buy it. Here, they can't play that card because Tesla is the most American car manufacturer that there is. So, you know, they, they just have to go on, oh, electric vehicles are, are going to ruin the world. It's like anything. Um, you know, there, there's always the haters and the skeptics um at first and then eventually uh everybody's on board and it's just you know that's the way it is uh, same with the iphone you know uh, a, a lot of people when the iphone came out um said oh well it doesn't have any buttons this thing's horrible you know uh, this thing's it's just a fad this is gonna die no one will ever go with an all glass screen and and not having a physical keyboard and blah 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 and now look you know, there's no way. So the Tesla is the same thing. People love to hate on things that are new um, or that are scary or whatever. I, I like to embrace them um, for the most part. Um, I'm still a little scared about AI and that kind of thing. So anyways, I could go on and on about that. Uh, who gives you that awesome haircut? Uh, my wife. She's a hairstylist. <laughs> I hope you're not being uh, sarcastic. What do you think about the price range would be for the Model Y around Model 3 price or Model S and X? Well, I think it'll be a little bit more than the Model 3 because it's uh, more vehicle. Um, and yeah, and, and but I don't think it'd be S or X prices. That that wouldn't make any sense at all because it is supposed to be the more economical version. Uh, yeah, I'd love to meet up with Bjorn. Um, I messaged him. Um, yeah, so there you go. Uh, I, I haven't uh, uh, I haven't heard back. So yeah, I, I'd love to uh, I'd love to meet up with him. Uh, the Model 3 will have most of the parts assembly of any vehicle currently in production. Yes, I saw the video by, by Marquez about Project Love Day. It was awesome. Of course, he's, he's uh, you know, uh, as good as they come. So, yeah, there we go. Um, and, yeah, uh, um, uh, you know, I'd love to meet up with him uh, and chat, chat a little bit more. So, uh, And, you know, I'm still wondering about when they're going to actually have uh, the Project Love Day winners announced because I put one in, as, as you may or may not know. Um, and, uh, 
uh, and it got, you know, some praise. Uh, I'm not, you know, the best at those kind of things, but hey, I gave it, I gave it a good shot. And so, so we'll see. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully that, that'll, that'll go well and, uh, and, and they'll recognize it. Um, I'm also curious to see, um, all the other entries and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for joining me. Um, Again, if you have any questions or anything else, please go get on my email list at teslanomics.co. You can also ping me at, uh, at teslanomics.co on Twitter, and, and I'll try to chat with you there. Uh, and as always, give this a big thumbs up um, if, if you liked what you saw. And uh, stay tuned on Thursday for my regular scheduled video uh, where I will uh, share some more in-depth analysis with you. By the way, next week, officially, is it next week? What day is it? Yeah, next week, I'm going to be switching to three videos per week. I know you guys have asked me for this for a while, and I'll actually be doing that. So uh, what we'll have is a Monday live stream like this. Then we'll have a Wednesday uh, analysis video. Then Friday, we'll have um, a more fun kind of video that's either an interview with somebody or just kind of like a different style video. Something that's just a bit more... Uh, less detailed analysis and just more fun. So uh, stay tuned for all of that coming soon um, here on my channel at Teslanomics. So thanks again for watching everyone and I will see you guys here next time. Peace out.